Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Pyatt and welcome to my YouTube channel. My goal is to help as many martial artists as possible in their journey and study of Fujitsu, whether you are a complete beginner or an experienced martial artist. I do weekly videos every Friday uh, and other additional bonus videos occasionally throughout the week. So please subscribe to our channel to get those videos straight to your uh, homepage uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. So this video is the first in a series looking at the fundamentals of Okinawan Kabudo, specifically Hojo Undo. So uh, in Okinawan Kabudo, uh, following the Matayoshi lineage, generally speaking, we don't talk about Kihan, we talk about Hojo Undo. Hojo Undo technically means supplementary training uh, and uh, effectively serves as the Kihan of the system. So Hojo Undo is a set for the bow. There are three sets of five techniques. Uh, which forms a total of 15 specific fundamental techniques. And some teachers then taught additional ones and, and would teach additional kihan on top of that. But the point is that the hojuundo, the reason that we use the phrase supplementary as well, is because the hojuundo actually all stem from the kata. So when you look at the movements and you then study the kata, you go, well, I do it exactly this, this way here, and I do this exact same movement in the kata there. So it is very much that way of, of instructing and providing you with those fundamentals that you then utilise in your kata later on. So with the bow, as I've said, there are three basic sets. Hojo undo da ich, hojo undo da ni, hojo undo da san. This series, we're going to look at, first of all, do hojo undo da ich. And within that, obviously, there are five techniques. The first is jo dan ichi, which is striking onto the head. Then we have jo dan maname ichi, shu dan yoko ichi, ge dan maname ichi, and kaki kitsuki. So I will put other videos on for each of those techniques in the description below, following on from this. So our first technique is, bo, uh, is for bo ho jo dan ich, is jo dan ichi. So jo dan doesn't actually mean head, head is atama. Jo dan literally means upper level. Uh, so, so it's here effectively, you know, any, anything from this point upwards we generally consider to be jo dan. And ichi means strike in this context. So uh, we are literally doing a head strike and it's vertical. Sometimes this technique is called, referred to as shonen ichi. Uh, because it's striking onto the crown of the head in particular. Um, the, before we go into the bow technique, we need to understand the basic starting posture that we have. Uh, so I'm not going to go into the into the semantics of the day, the way, and the bow and, and all that things in this video, but I'm going to focus on our basic posture. So when we're starting from a static position, which is what I'm going to do initially, uh, we want our, our hand that we start with to be tight to our body, uh, so the elbow shouldn't be out, the wrist shouldn't be curled, it should just be tight to our body so it comes in. Uh, and this effectively is going to be my offensive hand to begin with. My left hand is going to be my defensive hand and it shouldn't be relaxed. You know? At no point should I be standing there like I'm chilling out when I'm doing the kabuto. I've got to be as alert as I would if I was doing any other art. So my bow is in contact with the body and my elbow is in, my elbow is in from my left. I rotate the wrist and put tension here. So this is solid, it shouldn't be relaxed and fluffy. So this is my defensive hand that I can block, you know, this is my offensive hand that I can strike. Um, obviously I can use both in both contexts, but as just a general rule, just for a complete beginner, that is where we would start. Right? So I've got my bow effectively on the tip, not on, on the bone, but level with uh, the tip of my shoulder here. Um, and as we do the other techniques, we will see this move slightly. So for our first one, it is very high on the shoulder. So this is our basic start posture. We want to make sure we've got a good solid stance that we're rooted, we're not too tall, so we're lowering our centre, right? So from here, as we step forward, we're going to first of all break down to stay. So we step, we bend the knee and let the body weight start to come forward. We then let the shoulder start to come forward because in Okinawa Kabudo, based on the Matayoshi lineage, one of the key features is that all of the techniques, the power, comes very much from your body. So we utilize the fact that our body can rotate very rapidly to generate a lot of angular momentum that we can then put into the end of the strike. We utilize the fact that when the bow is close to my body, I can generate an awful lot of power because my muscles are acting very close to the pivot points around which they act. We're also utilizing the fact that obviously a weapon like the bow is a, is a giant lever. And so by keeping the point of rotation very close to the body until the end, we can project our kinetic energy to the tip of the bow, or project our momentum to the tip of the bow, depending on what type of strike we want to try, we're interested in doing, to have the biggest effect. 
So we start here and we very much let the, the vertebrae strike has to come from the body. So we step, we bend the knee, we lean the shoulder in, and then the tip of the bow is going to come over onto the top of the head with my front hand then as I strike rotating over the top to here. Now a couple of things about the hand position. So as I, as I strike I rotate this over and, and it's the same as if I was playing golf or cricket or, or anything like that. You've got this V shape very similar to if you, you were also doing the sword although obviously different schools will have slight variations. What I mustn't do is mustn't have a finger pointing down here because that's a target waiting to be smashed. So I need to have that in. Um, and I, I'm utilizing the angular momentum of my wrist, that rapid rotation then to press down onto the target. My backhand for uh, Joel Anichi, the um, way that Matthiolosi generally did it, uh, from what I understand at least, uh, is that he would bring it underneath the arm. So uh, this you could consider to be the sort of the true basic of Giovannucci. Uh, obviously this varies a lot throughout Matteoschi in different positions. A lot of the other movements we do, it's here. But supposedly in Giovannucci, this was the basic. Now I personally dislike this. I don't like doing it, uh, and therefore I don't. Uh, and the reason is because uh, as the bow, if I'm hitting, if my elbow stops the bow here, then if, if I haven't quite delivered my impact, my kinetic energy, my uh, momentum on my opponent, then that's going to have a detrimental effect. So I prefer to do what we do in most of the techniques and allow this to come past the arm. Uh, my wrists are strong enough and flexible enough to enable me to do that without feeling. Some people find this position very awkward when they first begin. Um, but from doing plenty of jiu-jitsu and things like that, uh, because my wrist is quite strong, that to me that, that isn't, that's not a compromise at all. So this position I prefer as opposed to here. So putting all that together, what does the technique look like? So from here we step and we come through. And again, in front. Set, we bend, the body comes forward, and we come over. You want to make as big an arc as possible, so you don't want to do this. It's not like the tip of the bow is coming forward towards the face, it's coming over. So you're. And the body, the knee should press as you strike, so your body weight is coming in. You're making the most use of your mass, okay? You're utilizing your effective mass. Just because this is our first video, we also need one other important skill to cover, which is grip changing. So the basic grip change from Ponte Notti is that whichever hand is up, we are going to rotate the fingers or snake the fingers around the bow and come over, and then the thumb shall be secure. So now we've got to Giacomotti. So I come to this position because I can fight adequately in this position. I can block, I can do lots of other things. Then the thumb on the other hand and the fingers snakes. You want to keep the fingers as tight as possible. So a good basic exercise initially is just doing the grip rotations. You don't really want to try and do this, this would be a bad. You don't want the bow to be moving around too much. Your goal is to keep the bow reasonably still whilst you're doing these and try and just get your fingers as tight as possible. Right? What you don't want to do is that. Right? Uh, also, you want to make sure you don't go this way so that you have both hands because to fight in this position isn't very effective. There, you can do one or two techniques from here reasonably well, but as a general grip, this is quite poor. So we either have this grip or this grip. And then obviously as we transition, we also have this posture, which occasionally we utilize. So for example, when we come in, and then we can also change our position on the bow as well. So we can use the full length, this kind of thing. So when you're doing your grip, snake the hands around. Right? And there's a general rule of thumb. It's a general rule. The hand that is pointing upwards is always the one that goes first. There are times when we break this rule because that's exactly what rules are for. That we broke it. But as a general rule, that's what we do. So just one last time from here as we step and come in over. If I then change my grip, I change my grip as I step back. Right? And then from here, we're there. 
Now I can, from here, uh, because if you, if you imagine my hand position if I rotate to here, this is actually, even though I've turned this over, this is the one that is up. So from there, this is the hand as a basic that I would change. Later on, it is okay to do this. So that I don't change the position of the bow, and I can get faster, a faster change, faster, but as a basic, I wouldn't advise doing that. So as a basic, you want to come one, and then set your position, reset your posture, step two, and then in, and then back. So make sure, the key point, start close to the body, make sure the elbows are in, step, bend the knee, lean the body in, let the shoulder come and make as large an arc as possible. As the bow starts to strike, make sure that you connect with the body. The front hand rotates and presses right over so that you press down and the back hand comes in. Make sure that your hips stay square and then as you step back, change your grip to this position. Keeping the elbow in, you don't want to be like this. From there. So that is the basic video on the first hold your dog but, uh, for first technique of bow or joint of that itch, which is Jordan Ichi. So you can check out the next video on Jordan and Nami Ichi by clicking the link to the video here. Hope you enjoy this good video guys.